If I die today, I'ma go and get some money. If I die today, I'ma go and get some money. If I die uh, today, if I die yeah. today. Cold flows for a cold mind, see a new world, but I'm so blind. Kick rocks when your time's up, better start digging like a cold mine. Cold heart, seen cold times, it's a bold move, but the sunshine raises up when you. Good morning, Ada family. It's your boy Bootman coming at you with yet another video, guys. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, that like button, and that notification bell. Thank you to each and every one of you that have been leaving four five comments down below. It is really, really showing. And my video is getting pushed up. So all the noobs out there can learn about the joys of Ada. I really appreciate it, guys. Keep it up. Let's get this video some high engagement. I got my hot tea and honey lot and loaded, ready to go. Let's get this show started. And we got this corrosion here posting something very poignant. On Twitter, I wanted to go over it. Grayscale taking Cardano on as the number one holding in a smart contract platform fund. If you did not know that, yes, they have different funds. They have a quote unquote ETH killer fund, and Cardano is the highest uh, allocation on that. It's a huge boon for the ecosystem, but it comes with some serious downsides. So let's take a look. Grayscale is a serious business when it comes to investing in funds. Being included, let alone the top holding, means that investors have eyes on Cardano. It also means that major players are not far behind. Now, this could be a good thing and a bad thing. A good thing for our pocketbook, but also a bad thing because it's going to make Cardano more scarce. A lot of the Cardano is going to be locked up in these quote-unquote custody accounts. And noobs who sell <laughs> are going to be really cutting into that supply it's going to be taken up by all the rich people now for us people who watch the videos people who are all in on ada people who are smart uh we're going to be fine we're going to reap the benefits but for future generations and for future people who want to get into the joys of cardano and pushing power to the edges it could be harder another thing too if Grayscale goes belly up, if they make bad investments, uh, if anything like that happens, we could see, you know, a massive dumping of ADA. Not saying that that can happen. I'm just saying, not saying that will happen. I'm saying it can happen. Meaning in the next year or two, we'll most likely see massive institutional and personal investment capital flowing through these funds. Uncertainty and regulation is probably the biggest factor holding it back now fantastic right unfortunately currently grayscale is having all the ada purchase held in coin cold storage with coinbase who controls the staking keys the thought of this process is to treat coinbase like the loins of london for crypto now you guys know how i feel about coinbase if you don't go ahead and check out my vchain video i just did Unfortunately, this interferes with both Cardano staking and governance systems and also bad for investors who are not getting the return they should be getting for staking. This is a problem that I'd like to see addressed head on. Now, the return that they're getting from staking, I mean, if they focus on small stake pool operators, things even out over time. You know, I'm not going to tell anybody to be staking with Coinbase or staking with, you know, Binance or 1% pool or, you know, somebody with 10 pools. That's not in the nature of decentralization. That's why you guys should always be staking with um, small stake pool operators. Another thing with the staking as well, um, I don't know if this has been implemented yet, but there were supposed to be some pro protocol changes that disincentivize people from opening multiple stake pools to make the decentralization factor better. Um, I don't know where the development is on that just yet. Things have kind of stayed the same when since it first got released, um, but I think those are gonna get addressed. Um, talking about not being paying attention. Hopefully in institutional investment firms will see that Cardano is a unique investment and requires different approaches than commodities such as gold if we can manage to get their attention maybe cardano well could show them their error their ways yeah so that's very pretty interesting um interesting take when it comes to big institutional investors in cardano things that worry me again are institutional investors buying up all the ada which would be good for us you know but again we're supposed to be pushing the power to the edges yeah, we'll get rich, but 
the people who don't know anything about ADA, they're going to miss their spot. All the ADA is going to be taken up by custody accounts, by institutional investors, kind of like what we're seeing now with real estate. Okay, the reason why real estate is so expensive is because the massive amount of debt and Black BlackRock coming in and Wall Street coming in and buying up all the homes. And right now, Ada is at a price point where these institutional investors might think it's an amazing deal. Come in and swoop it up. So let me know what you guys think down below. Please leave about those five comments. And uh, let's go ahead and move on. Speaking of staking, please consider delegating to a small stake pool operator, guys. It's important that you do so. Ticker symbol 1COMM. Thank you to OneCom for sponsoring the channel. Let's keep chopping wood. Small stake pool operators are the lifeblood of the Cardano ecosystem. All right. So please go ahead and delegate to OneCom. Ticker symbol 1COMM. Let's keep chopping wood. Let's move on. Now. Ada Whale posted this, all right, and I don't really agree with him. I'm not going to really focus on what Ada Whale pointed out here, but the DeFi investor posted this, and I and I actually kind of agree with him here, all right. And this is a call to all the Cardano DApps out there to make it as easy, as seamless, and as intuitive as possible. Fast, easy, cheap, all right. That's what we need to focus on, and secure, obviously. But that's what we need to focus on in order to take us to the next level. Most people don't care about decentralization. That is 100% true. They will use the best product even if it's centralized. DeFi cannot succeed with dApps that are charging high fees, have intimidating UI, and more. Invest in protocols that offer frictionless, efficient experience for people on chain. I wholeheartedly agree, guys. People, trust me. Trust me, you, you don't believe me that people don't care about decentralization? All right, well, you're at work, you're on a break, try to strike up a conversation with your coworker who has no idea what crypto is, and it's just a normal pleb, and just trying to make it, make it out here, this cruel world. I want you to talk to him about some decentralization. He's going to look at you with a blank stare <laughs> and be like, right. Let me just go ahead and sign this agreement to give my data away for this cool app, this cool new app. Guys, people do not care about decentralization. People do not care about privacy. Okay. All the data that these websites and the internet collects off of you, they don't care about your data. They don't care about decentralization. The only thing they care about is making the darn thing work. If the, if the app works, they'll use it. If the app is easy to use, they'll use it. There's too many apps out here. There's too many distractions for a normal human who isn't, you know, predisposed to crypto like us. You know, we're, we're crypto people are some interesting people. Okay. We're interesting people. We're, we're not normal people. Most of us aren't. We care about decentralization. We can see the forest from the trees. We know that the government at any moment can confiscate our 401k. We know that the government at any moment can print us into a hyperinflationary scenario where they freeze bank accounts. We know that. But normies out there don't think about that. They trust their institutions. That's why they're not in crypto. Okay? We need to educate them. And we need to make the, the, the transition as seamless and as frictionless as possible in order for us to have a chance. All right. So comment down below what you think down below. Let me know. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I feel. And then finally, guys, we're going to show, show like a short clip here of the Charles Hoskinskin uh, ETH merge vid video interview with Cointelegraph. Um, after this, I am going to end the video. I love you guys so much. Don't let your means be dreams. I will talk to you soon with the VHA and Cardano updates. Have an amazing day. So you recently had an argument on Twitter with some Ethereum core developers about how the Ethereum merge was conducted. You um, expressed some ideas about how you would have done it differently. So what's 
What's exactly that you don't like about the post-merge Ethereum and what, have you, what would have you done differently? Well, uh, I mean, there's a lot to that, but concisely, I think the first issue is that Ethereum, it's the Hotel California of cryptocurrencies. Uh, you can check in, but you can't check out. You have a situation where you have to lock your funds for an indeterminate amount of time. And if bad things happen, you lose your funds. There's a slashing mechanism. It's completely unnecessary to have a slashing mechanism. It's not an opinion. You have years of operating evidence from Cardano operating and like systems operating. Uh, and you have a lot of academic papers actually showing clearly what the security model is. And they've chosen to go to a bizarre model that doesn't really have a lot of security. It, it has a lot of operational overhead and ultimately it's created a situation that it's gonna drain liquidity from their system. As funds get locked to participate in consensus, you'll have less and less ether trading in the marketplace. And then what will ultimately happen is you'll have uh, a liquidity crisis um, where a lot of volatility comes in. So you get big price spikes, but big price declines. And all of this is incumbent in the design of their consensus protocol. And again, it will only perhaps get equivalent security to what we've done. No more additional security, no more additional performance. Uh, and it's also dubious how they're going to use this to bootstrap all of their scaling plans, which are ever changing. So it's a bizarre roadmap and it is what it is. My big issue is that it's contaminating the entire conversation of proof of stake. Already Jack Dorsey has tweeted, oh, well, this is proof of stake, pointing to Casper and to Ethereum, not realizing that that's just one flavor. And the problem is those design decisions are now going to become kind of the canonical notion of proof of stake from a regulatory viewpoint, from a brand and marketing viewpoint, when people don't realize that you have many different ways you can do it. There is definitely a lot of concern around the uh, security aspect of right. the Ethereum post-merge, specifically because of this very high concentration of stake teeth in the hands of a few entities, while Cardano, as far as I understood, has a system in place which kind of disincentivizes the excessive centralization and concentration of um, staked ADA, which is the uh, token running on Cardano. And if a staking pool owns too much ADA, then the right. rewards start decreasing. Is that correct? That's correct. And that model was actually developed in a research collaboration with professors at Oxford. So it's a well-studied model. And in practice, we have over 3,000 stake pools and 74% of the supply is not only delegated to them, but also liquid. Meaning at any time you can move your funds. You can't do that with Ethereum. Right. On the other hand, talking to many Ethereum developers and uh, experts, uh, as far as I understand, the staked ETH that now is locked uh, on the blockchain, will be, uh, it will be possible to withdraw it in a few months. So it's not that it's there forever. Uh, that's not true. Um, it, they have to do a hard fork to unlock. And who knows when that's coming? I mean, there's actual tweets from Ethereum core developers saying we don't care. Uh, so they say it's a few months, but then announce a date and then tell us the technical mechanism that the unlock is going to occur. But my understanding is they require another hard fork to enable the unlocking of funds because um, there's no clock on it. Where, what epoch does it occur at? What, what block? height do your funds unlock at? It should be a deterministic process, right? Okay, so now I would like to touch upon an interesting theme. Thank you for tuning in and watching daily VeChain and Cardano videos on Satoshi Boomin channel. I want to say a wonderful shout out to our wonderful Patreons here, Maryland for Crypto, Anthony Andrews, Farooz Din, Kyle Bachi, Crypto SVT.SI, Angeltopia, DNC Vale, Leon Jackson, the second, Kragen, All Flare LLC, Lucky Sunshine Token, and Catherine Braun. Guys, let's keep chopping wood. Don't let your means be dreams. And thank you so much for your wonderful Patreon support.